Hello, I think it's uh, time to start. Welcome to my presentation about uh, Drupal and the uh, blockchains. Yeah. Thanks for closing the door. <laughs> So, my name is um, Thorsten. I'm working in the blockchain for a while and uh, for Drupal in a very long time. Currently, I work for a. Oh! Sorry. It's not in my control. <laughs> Uh, currently, I'm working for a company in, in New York called Consensus. We, we're like a startup uh, with uh, around uh, close to 400 people now working in uh, different uh, sections of the blockchain, with lots of experimental stuff. Myself, I came to, to blockchain technology uh, some about two years ago. A friend asked me, um, uh, to do some, some UI because he said he, he created a Twitter client and uh, nobody can ever censor it. It was a, a, a funny project. Uh, it's not maintained anymore, but uh, basically it just wrote text strings into a blockchain. And uh, it showed me a lot of uh, things and it made me very interested into this. Uh, who who uh, knows Bitcoin? Yeah, it's most, most of the people, and who knows Ethereum so far? Wow, it's a lot. Surprised. Um, yeah, my talk uh, I, I will be, might be a bit more technical than the, the last one about this, this subject, but I will try to start with a very simplified introduction to the blockchain technology. So basically, who, who cares about the blockchain? It, it got a, a huge media coverage in the, in the last one, one, two years. And uh, nearly all uh, professional sectors like uh, evaluating how, how a blockchain might affect uh, their work. So for example, a lot of, of banks and bank consortiums try to, to improve their interbanking trade. Um, uh, in, for example, I, I worked in Dubai recently on, on land registry uh, project. So Dubai, uh, Dubai's uh, king, I think, decided uh, till 2020 he want to have like all public government's uh, documents on the blockchain um, to to have like signatures uh, approved by by state. But there's a, I think there's a lot of more than the the enterprise part. I really like the, the idea because it's a peer-to-peer -peer platform. So um, I, I like the idea that uh, you, you have like direct, enable direct trade without borders. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of interesting projects. For example, one of my company's projects is uh, Ujo Mu Music. They try to make a kind of like a, a music platform where you directly um, have Contracts. We come later to this, where you say, "Oh, this is my license models for for my my song," and then you can choose a, a payment option, and you get a license for a movie or a license just to like stream it and something like this. And you don't have like the, the payment is directly done to the to the music, and you set up, "Oh, this is my band," and this par party gets so much share and stuff like this. And um, last year, also, like the, the lawyers uh, do a lot of research and, and thinking about how, how this new technology will actually affect uh, the legal uh, view. So, what, what the blockchain is, is bringing new to the internet, it's um, a, a new layer of trust, um, which is like currently in the internet, you cannot like trust uh, on, on money, and you have a central um, network where everybody get the same value, and it's sinking itself. But we get there. What I really like about it, what I just said, is uh, the idea of like sharing economy. Um, it's, it's basically uh, 
the, the companies like Uber or something take a share of a taxi driver. And I see a high potential of rebuilding this stuff into a, like a, uh, without these big companies in the middle in the decentralized way. And there's also um, the idea of, of self-sovereign user data, so that you um, put up a profile and then you have attestation. For example, you put an a address on your, on your profile and then whatever a, a bank or a, a country can like, attest that this information you put there is, is valid. So, um, how to imagine this, this uh, mystical uh, blockchain? I, I kind of like the idea, uh, it's a, the, the most simple way to explain it. It's like a, a decentralized database which keeps itself in, in sync. So, if you, if you take Bitcoin as the, the, the first blockchain as an example, so it says, oh, this address owns that money, and then you transfer the money to somebody else, and if the, every node of the network go into consensus about this, so if I set up one own node and I say, oh, no, I own like, more Bitcoins than the five I actually have, the network will like, uh, find out that I do like, wrong information there, and it will just like, kick me out of the network because I, I kind of forked the chain and I, I didn't agree to the consensus. So, so um, about Ethereum, like Ethereum is, I think, uh, the, um, a little bit a later version of the blockchain. Bitcoin only does money transfer. Um, where, like, Ethereum is it's, uh, based on op uh, all implementations are open source and it offers a lot more uh, functionality than Bitcoin does. So um, in the Ethereum blockchain you have next to this uh, database consensus, uh, as, I, as I called it, this peer-to-peer -peer network of, of nodes um, confirming each other, you have like this leads you to, to a global ledger, so you can put a value there, and the, the value is like every, every node has the same value, which enables like things like these registries that you can like, you put a hash of a document there, and then um, nobody can like change the history and can say, oh, the hash was different, I, I want to change the document, it was not really my favorite. So you just can do a new transaction and everybody will see that you changed it. <coughs> The, the new, also new thing compared to Bitcoin is that you can create a scripting, uh, this, this business value of, of money, but I come back to this in a second. Um, basically, the, the whole system is based on asymmetric cryptography, um, a little bit like, like with uh, pr uh, PGP. Um, I also come back later to this. So, how we get the, the data into like the chain. So basically there's like a new block created every I think like 15 seconds or something, there's a new block created and it takes all signed transactions together and, and combines them into a block. And the block always contains the hash of the last block and uh, the next block has the hash, so, so you cannot like break this chain without uh, break this chain without uh, knowing it. Um, uh, one thing is like in Ethereum blockchain, data is uh, kind of public. It's a little bit binary encoded, and you need to know the the, the way you put it that you can read it. But um, it's not encrypted. There's some some other implementations of Ethereum, like uh, Quorum, which kind of it goes for, for privacy protection in this, but this is like not yet uh, the default. So what is a smart contract? Um, basically, I have this, this example of, of the most simple idea of a smart contract that I, I see in, in the crowdfunding. So basically, um, you, you say in a crowdfund, you say, oh, if I, if I found like whatever, $10,000 uh, or money units, 
then my crowdfund is successful. So I will move the, the money to the founding account. But if this does not happen by the, by the given time, you can automatically transfer the money back to, to its original owners. And if you have this deployed, uh, you're, you're like, it's, it's, it, it's gonna happen. You cannot like just change it. Oh, I decided 9,000 is enough. So it's, it wouldn't work. <laughs> So um, these smart contracts, they have like addresses, so you can like address them and interact with them um, to make uh, transactions like. So everything is uh, based on this in this asymmetric uh, crypto key pairs and you need like in order to put anything on the blockchain, you need to, to sign it with your, with your private key. Um, every private key is like represents an uh, address, which is like a derivative of the pub public key. Um, but you cannot only sign transactions with this. There's like um, some other things which like work with asymmetric cryptography before. Um, which is uh, doing just signatures, like on, on a text, uh, without necessarily interacting with the blockchain. So basically, when you when you have a text and you give a signature to it, then you have like a string of, of the signature. And if somebody has the, the text and the signature, he can say, "Oh, you are the only one who could produce the signature," so he knows that you own this this private key without knowing your key. <coughs> And uh, you can also like encrypt data with this uh, keys. So one of the the evolving stuff and, and one of the most challenges currently is getting uh, this to all browsers. So this is like a, a very highly moving environment. And currently there's a, a MetaMask uh, you see in the, in the image. Um, which is a browser plugin. It's, it's currently developed into a, a browser independent plugin. There is like the original Ethereum Mist browser. This is the two, two ones I, I have uh, currently working in, in my proof of concept application, which is the, the current module. But there's a, a lot of other uh, uh, projects uh, developed, and I think um, in yeah, the, the timing is hard to say. Um, I'm optimistic that we get more and more end user devices in actually being able to, to interact with the blockchain. So this is just some of them coming on the horizon. So when I think about Drupal, we always want to like serve like every user of our website. So I think it's not yet, the ecosystem is not yet ready that you can just like make an application for like everyone because the all these transaction signers are not that uh, advanced that, that you could like say, oh, I, I target all browsers immediately. Um, in the module uh, also concerning signatures, uh, there's like I created kind of two different ways to do the same thing. Um, uh, one, one is a, a smart contract based uh, sign up where you kind of uh, get a challenge from Drupal and you sign it as a transaction into a smart contract registry. And then Drupal can read that you signed this and then it knows, oh, you own this key, so you're um, added to this registry in the contract. But this is basically a transaction uh, which, which costs a little money, like in Ethereum, all transactions uh, um, cost it's not much, but it, it, if you write data to the blockchain, you need, need to pay something because this money is used to, to actually as an incentive for the people who are running this blockchain nodes um, that, they, that, they, that they do it, you know. <laughs> but um, I created a second uh, sign-up module, which um, is like a non-blockchain. It uses the same techniques, but it just signs a challenge. It's a challenge response authentication. So... Um, Drupal, you don't need to like pay for the transaction, you can just sign up. So basically this is a little bit uh, a summary. There's a lot of, lot of different uh, things happening in the ecosystem. Uh, Ethereum is specified by a 
a, a yellow paper, it's called, and it has uh, different implementations, like on the, on the client level, it's like gate parity, forum, there's like a test environment which doesn't actually connect to the blockchain, it's just for testing. So the implementations are not 100% the same, so I ended up uh, building a, a library to abstract it. It's like a strongly typed PHP 7 library because um, all the data types you want to write to the blockchain need to be like strongly typed, otherwise it, it wouldn't work. And on the front end, you also have the, the problem that you don't know yet exactly which uh, tools that your end user has to sign transactions. So um, like on the, on the PHP side, the library is, is kind of working, but on the front end, I currently use uh, support MetaMask and MIST, but it, we need to have like a more pluggable infrastructure that you maybe also can like just scan uh, a QR code to sign this transaction in a, in a totally external device. <coughs> I think this is one of the biggest challenge to integrate many clients and you also need to evaluate which are actually in use. So um, there's like, Basically, uh, Ethereum is, is a, a fast evolving system. Uh, it's, it's the main language for smart contracts, Solidity. It's, it's still in a O point release. And it's, it's like constantly evolving. There's new libraries. People evol evaluate different ways how to do things. Um, we have a, currently a transaction throughput of, of about I think it's like around 15 uh, transactions. If you, if you only do value transactions like you would do in Bitcoin, it's like 25. Um, but this is like not really a scale where you where you can like reach like large sites. Um, Visa processes I think 60,000 transactions per second. So um, there's the the goal is uh, from the Ethereum Foundation to reach the the transaction speed of, of Visa, but it will take some years. <coughs> yeah, basically the blockchain is really large. Now it's 280 gigabyte. Every time I, I talk about it, it's like doubled up. <laughs> so um, there's a light clients in development. Basically you cannot have like a, a client with 280 gigabytes to deliver on a phone. So um, there's like web services. Uh, Infura um, is, a, is a service which you can like use to connect to the blockchain, which I, I use as a default in, in the module. But um, this is all in high development. I think in, within a year we will have light clients which don't download the whole blockchain, just like headers for verification. Um, Drupal Ethereum module, I need to speed up a bit. Um, I picked it up in 2016, uh, found out that uh, it was like not really working and I kind of completely rewrote the, the library below. Uh, currently we have a, a proof of concept, uh, some, some part is in GitHub only because I couldn't like make it solve one problem which, which I would see required to, to put it in a, in a Drupal branch because now it's not only it's still depending on an external tool. Um, I focus on creating the infrastructure around. So my company, we really favor the ideal uh, decentralization. So compared to the current web, you would have like the Ethereum network as a, as a data share layer. And IPFS, is, it's called Interplanetary File System. It's a, a decentralized file system where like the idea is like everything is like decentralized and you just interact with decentralized stuff. But in practical, um, the world is not that far. So um, about every blockchain application I know currently needs a de central database somewhere. Which, um, I came to this, uh, which kind of this is the point where it really fits into, into the Drupal environment. So I don't want to host uh, keys on, on a server because if you, if you do like, oh, we make a password login and we create a, a private key for you, you just have the security of, of your, your sign up process. So uh, the current focus of the, of the Drupal module is transactions, sign signatures are always done in the front end. 
because you should own your key. I don't want to have the key stored somewhere. I, I would not do it on a web server for sure. <coughs> So basically, you have a front-end side where you, where you sign a transaction. This will directly go to the, to the Ethereum network. And then Drupal can validate if this transaction actually happened. So you sign up into a, like a, a registry in a smart contract. And then Drupal will like see, oh, this transaction has happened. Yeah, he really signed up. So you have kind of like a, a circle validation and Drupal will only pull data, the PHP layer will only pull data. So I tried to uh, get a little bit to the architecture. Uh, um, we have like the Ethereum nodes, which is like the decentralized network. And we might also, um, like one plan is creating an entity type for nodes that you can kind of like do uh, easy listing in views, uh, listing all the servers, whatever, if they're online or offline, or they're, they're, uh, the server information you can, can gather a query from nodes. <coughs> Currently, we only have like one fixed connection, but this is like uh, one part. Um, what already kind of works is the uh, connection of um, a Drupal Ethereum accounts with a Drupal account. Uh, sorry, uh, Ethereum accounts, the Drupal accounts, where you kind of have the, the possibility to create like a known user. You, you map this Ethereum address, which is just a text long uh, hash, to, to accounts, and then you have for a limited user group, you can say, oh, this is my users. So every interaction is uh, creating transactions. Another thing I think it's really important for this module is to be able to listen uh, to blockchain changes. And uh, say you deploy a smart contract and it creates a registry, so you want to, to know like every time somebody submits this, you would create an entity on the front end uh, that you can kind of act on this. You know the contract, you read the data, and it's like, oh, this value is submitted, and you act on this. <coughs> Um, and we have smart contracts. Um, in, in an ideal world, we will like just deploy them out of Drupal. I think, um, or I'm working on, on infrastructure to, to enable this, that you, you have like test networks and live network, and in, uh, you would ideally just like load a module, a sub-module of the Ethereum module, whatever, a voting module, and then you deploy the contract, which is delivered with there to, to a network in, in the admin UI, using also a transaction signer to deploy it. <coughs> Sorry, I need water. <laughs> and uh, basically the Every contract defines its, its own data types. It's called the, this a contract ABI. And Drupal needs to know which is the data types in a contract in order to read the data. Otherwise, it's like an unknown hex data, and you don't know where it starts, and where it, if it's a ray or if it's a string. So current state. Uh, we have uh, this. this uh, Sign up module in, in two, two variants. One is in, in GitHub. I created a Docker uh, uh, script to, to test it. And basically, there's a lot of things to be done. I, I was like actually very little on time in the, in the last half year about. Uh, I'm very optimistic that in November I'm going to start like get much more time on this project. The, Underlying PHP library uh, is not like supporting the, the hard uh, complex data types yet. Um, what, I, what I explained with the transaction sign is I, I need to develop a, a pluggable system that we can replace different uh, end user transaction signers on this. And the uh, contract management and deployment and server entities. I think this is like the basic infrastructure modules we need in order to create like real applications on top of this.
So why, why is this actually interesting? I, I think it will really uh, change the internet on the long term. And Drupal strength is actually uh, enterprise workflows. Hey. Um, so I, I see a lot of potential applications like asset management, document signing systems, where you basically need a user workflow on, on the back end side in order, and you have a, a, a visualization like views uh, making, making it nice. And I think this is something uh, Drupal would really uh, fit in. Um, there's also uh, the idea of like creating the decentralized organ organizations, which is a, um, that you create a founding out of, um, of Ethereum members and, and uh, do budgeting or voting systems. Like you, you say, oh, this is our budget and we vote for this. There's some ideas, but I have to admit that I, I was optimistic we get earlier to this, but uh, the infrastructure work is, is more, more than, I, than I thought so far. And yeah, but it will come. In, in an <sighs> ideal world, we have out of the box stuff. So uh, I planned a, ba uh, a buff session tomorrow for people who want to discuss more use cases. I, I, I lacked a little bit the, the actual applications this time. It's more in my last talk. Um, I invite you to join tomorrow, discuss more about what, what you can imagine in, in Drupal and blockchain connected. Um, yeah, that's my slides you find there. Thank you. Uh, my, my company, Consensus, is sponsoring my time, so uh, I'm grateful to be, to be able to work on this. And that's it. Questions? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> no. Okay, thank you. Oh, no. So you talked about the sign-in process in Drupal and that it then checks if the transaction was processed on the blockchain via PHP. How long does that take? Is it instant or do you have to wait like 15 seconds before it picks it up and says, okay, it's okay, you can log in? It, it takes a little time, okay. 15 seconds might, yeah, might so be it's right, it's the average instant. block time. Yeah, it's I not think. as instant and as a regular login. Yeah, yeah. It, it works in the, in the other way, like basically this one login is like really doing a transaction will take the time if you, if you use the approach of challenge response authentication where you just like sign it instantly because you don't need to wait for the blockchain. It's just like local crypto coffee. Okay, and then one quick other question. Like, uh, now you still need like the MetaMask plugin or another kind of browser. Are there any plans to integrate it into existing browsers like Chrome, Safari, Internet Explorer, or that's still way into the future? So, so uh, the, the most common uh, tool for this currently is MetaMask. Um, it uses a web service, so it doesn't download the, the whole blockchain. The, the Ethereum browser does, downloads really the 280 gigabyte blockchain now. It, it's a challenge. Um, but uh, it, it's developed into like a more non-browser independent uh, JavaScript library. Um, I think there will be much more to come. Like currently, I'm, I'm thinking about how is the, the smartest way to integrate it to make it really exchangeable that we can use all different kinds of transaction signers. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you.